And we used to go anywhere in the UK with our tank of inflatable poo. We used to buy uh, uh, and our gas masks and wetsuits. And that's all it took to get the front page of The Guardian. That's all it took to get on the front page of The Observer or in, in any local newspapers. And you just up the pressure all the time. Use our political um, system. You know, within <coughs> nine months of our forming, we went to the House of Commons uh, and they welcomed us. And we ended up with, you know, the, the Conservatives, Labour Shadow and Lib Dems all in the same room, all debating. The sergeant at, at arms for the House of Commons even provided us with a, a surfboard rack that we were allowed to put our boards in. So we have, we live in this country where we can go and demonstrate, we can engage with the political system, and we should do so. It's not just up to them, it's up to all of us as well. Use the media as much as possible, I said that. We, we at one point, one of our members rang up and said, um, I write the script for BBC Casualty. So we both worked on a script for BBC Casualty. You can imagine being you know, the minister or one of the heads of water, water companies just sat there when this was when 14 million people used to watch um, Casualty. And they would have been sat there with a glass of wine on a Saturday night and suddenly I think the wine might have been spat out because we were all over that programme. It was all about us and about why sea, clean seas are important. Um, using the law, these two ladies, um, Sarah and Rachel, we looked at a, a law, we warned Carrick District Council, we had a meeting with them and we said um, Section 79E of the Environmental Protection Act 1990 states that an accumulation or deposit prejudicial to health or a nuisance, you as the council, the statutory authority, shall issue the abatement notice. No discretion, you should do it. Go away, think about this for six months and then we're going to come and ask you this formally. We asked, we waited six months, Rang them up and said, what are you doing? They said nothing. We went to them. We went up to the High Courts and we judicially reviewed both um, South West Water, Carrick District Council and the National Rivers Authority. And we won and we set case precedent. And, and Sarah went on to be a teacher and Rachel's just completed a Master's in Environmental Studies. So it's a good thing. Again, we got the law, use it. Um, be daring. We bought a uh, hundred shares in every single water company within the UK. That gave us complete right to go to any of their AGMs and take them over <laughs> and ask any question we wanted. And that also ended up with us being asked to go up into the city. And at the end of this month, I'm going to um, give a presentation to some families, um, the, the people, the, the fund managers for these families. There's 20 of them in the room, and I'm going to be talking to them about ethical investment in environmental solutions. The value of those 20 people on that morning will be between three and five billion pounds. So it's out there, we can make these changes, there are people looking to invest, and I think it's about three billion, the E.ON project, I think. So it's important that we, we see these things and we see them funded. Um, friends and foes, this is a member of the European Parliament who rang us up and said again, I'm one of your members, do you want to come and meet the President? So you use friends, and he took us upstairs and we met the President of the European Parliament, um, also, though, the media are required to give a balanced view, so they need to serve up someone who will argue against you. The best foe we ever had um, was a certain councillor in Newquay who, in the middle of August, said that if we didn't shut up and go away, he would ban surfing in Newquay. <laughs> That's great. It took him six months to work out that every time the media rang us up, I would say, yes, you should interview this chap as well. It works. Um, this is us up. Talking to the President, this was Egon Klepsch in 1994, we presented a, a, a dossier as to why the European Directive didn't work, why the Bathing Water Directive didn't work, and what the reality was on the beaches. And it's really important that whilst people are doing brilliant things in the kind of public sector, the people who are developing these laws, that people from grassroots also have the right and have certain bits and can see things in a different way. Um, you know, Steve's wonderful paper that he gave a minute ago on, on all that, and, you know, how the world ticks. It's really important that these people, us, the normality, is represented at that highest level as well. And it's pretty accessible. You know, if I as a, a surf bum, a surf bum, can get to be the President of the European Parliament, you lot can do anything as well. Um, I had to put this picture in the power of the oceans, but just to check the size of that out. There's um, enough power in our seas and with the wind to just generate everything we need. We don't need oil. We don't need, you know, the oil wars. This is the wave hub that's being planned off Cornwall. But if we're not really careful, you know, this is three years behind schedule in the UK. 
three of the, at least uh, two, maybe three of the people, companies who are looking to invest in this, the manufacturers, have already pulled out and are going to Portugal because Portugal's in the water. Portugal has 52% renewable energy. We're kicking around in single figures. We need to really see a significant shift. You know, we have the best wind in Europe, and yet, who's got the wind technology? There's one company set up in 1984 by a German um, post-grad who's ended up, they employ 8,000 people and export you know, wind turbines, high quality wind turbines around the world. We should have had that technology, we should have had that business. And we should, and we can do with ways and tidal if we get on with it. Um, to wrap up, what did SAS achieve at the end of all of that? So, you know, those were our change tools. We helped deliver five and a half billion pounds spend on the clean up of the coastal waters of the UK. And if we as a bunch of surfers can do that, as I say, just think what you can all do.